Welcome, welcome, welcome to Learning Reaper. I'm your host, x.e.l.o. And today, I'm actually going to go over this Novation keyboard that's made for FL Studio, but I'm going to see how it actually works inside of Reaper. Let's go. All right, so here we are inside of Reaper, and this theme is called Reaper Tips. And um, I have a couple of things set up in here. This is just some Keyzone Classics. I wanna show you the overhead shot of the keyboard. So this is the keyboard. This is the FL Key 49. So this is the newer one that they actually put out for FL Studio. But I wanted to use it inside of Reaper. I actually got this from Zounds. If you're not familiar with Zounds, they actually do a whole bunch of equipment uh, you can actually get a link below in the description. You can use that link and get equipment for keyboards, monitors, anything pretty much dealing with recording audio. You can actually get it from Zounds. And my link is below in the description where you can actually support the channel that way. Um, they sent me over this keyboard. I was testing it for FL Studio and I was curious about how it actually worked inside a Reaper. So here we are. <laughs> Off the bat, uh, the transport keys did not work once you actually plug it in. It, it does recognize the keyboard as a keyboard, so like I can play. Like I can play the MIDI on here, no problem whatsoever, and Reaper will actually find the keyboard and kind of set it up. But you need to do a couple of other things if you want to actually make like your transport work, uh, if you want the faders to kind of work a little bit, but there's certain things that you have to set up to where you'll be able to use it in its, in its full capacity. Um, I haven't found anything on Ovations or from uh, Reaper that actually incorporates this keyboard yet. I don't know if there's people out there working on it or not, but uh, it is something that, you know, may come down the line. Straight off the bat, the keyboard is okay. I like the build quality. It's all right. Um, I'm not a fan of this, um, the pitch wheel. Like, it's not really bouncy enough for me. Um, and it's kind of like flimsy in a way. The buttons are kind of... They're interesting. They're not like really like soft pads. They're not necessarily hard pads. It's just kind of just a pad. <laughs> uh, I guess if that makes sense. Um, a lot of the other functions don't work like your tracks and your uh, presets. None of these work. Um, you would have to assign it to like a button inside of Reaper. Um, and I can show you that fairly quickly inside the DAW. But let's get that set up. All right, so first thing we wanna do is go up to options and we're gonna go down to preferences, All right? And once you're in preferences, you wanna to go to MIDI devices and you're gonna look for the one that says FL key, right, MIDI. So uh, if you click on this one and you wanna enable it, you wanna right click on it and you can enable it and make sure you have enable input for control messages. So this way, if you wanna set this up so you can actually use like your controls, like your play, stop, record kind of stuff. This is what has to be activated on there. Make sure this uh, enable input for control messages is on, right? Uh, once you have that set up, you can actually close out of <laughs> the uh, MIDI devices, right? And the next step you wanna do is go up to your action list. So go to actions, go to show action list, and here is where all the fun is. Let's say you want to do a transport, right? So you type in transport and all of these things are what the transport does. So you have a whole bunch of different transport options inside of Reaper. The one I actually set up was this one here that says uh, transport play. So um, I set it up for this MIDI channel. So if you hit the delete on there, you could delete that off of there. And if you hit add, right, you hit add, and then you actually press the button that you want, which is the play. So I'm gonna hit play on the keyboard. And now, as you see, it says MIDI channels 16CC115, <laughs> right? And I can hit okay on there. And now I get a play. And as you see, it'll play from Reaper. But as you see, it's doing a double jump. And the reason that is, is because of the way it's set up. So if you're doing the MIDI CC on these Novation keyboards, you wanna change this absolute just for the transport. Um, you're gonna change this to relative one, right? So this one right here is the one I've actually been using. 
and hit OK on there. So now when I hit play, it just plays smooth. Uh, the same thing can do for stop, which is on this keyboard. So I did a stop. And if you go to the MIDI CC on here, um, it's going to be set to this relative one. Hit OK. The last one on here is record. So if you look for record, transport record, I have that set up on here as well. So on record one, I have it on the relative one as well. If you just set this up as a regular thing on here, as an absolute, let me show you what happens. So if you hit record, you see it'll record and then kind of stop. See, like the record won't stay on. Uh, in order to get it to stay on, double click on that uh, and go into the relative one, right? Hit OK. And now if I hit record, it'll actually record. Right? And it's just that simple to actually get that set up on here. So the same thing could be done for your faders. So if you go to... So if you go to track volume, right? So these here are the track volumes. I have the first two set up on here, like just so I can try it. So basically what you wanna do is, I'm gonna set up this third one here, right? So it's gonna set volume for the track three, which is this track three here. Uh, and you have up to 99 inside of this um actions list but if you want to do this one you just hit add right and then i'll go to the third fader and now you see that it says that it set up a midi cc for it and you probably want to put this on absolute uh just because if you don't put on absolute it's going to actually do some weird just up and down on there like 100% or 0% is no in between. Uh, so yeah, so make sure you have these, the faders on absolute. So and actually, let me show you what it does if you leave it on this. So I'm gonna hit okay. So now I have this third one. As you see, it went all the way to the top and I'm not even on that level. Whatever way I move is gonna move it all the way up or down. So uh, in order to change that, you wanna double click on here, go here and go to absolute. Hit OK. So now when I move this fader, it's going to move to the level of wherever you have it. And it won't just go crazy, right? So that's how you would set up like your MIDI. And it can work for any of the buttons on the, the keyboard. The only thing about it is that certain things won't transfer over. And that's to be expected with, you know, a keyboard. But you can set it up however you want, like these like channel rack buttons. These are mixer buttons. You need to find, well, I need to find a way if I was gonna keep this keyboard to move over to like the next set of mixers just so that I can adjust these accordingly. Like if I had 20 tracks, like I would put the MIDI CCs on there, but how would I move to the next set of mixers to get there? That's what I haven't figured out yet. Uh, if you do know, Leave it below in the comment section. We can figure this out together. <laughs> All right. So, um, so we know that the keyboard works with the MIDI perfectly fine. You can actually set it up to change buttons and faders, which is really, really cool. And um, it does keep some of the features that the keyboard originally has. So let, let's say that you wanted to do like a note repeat. You can actually have a button here that has note repeat on it. And if you wanted to, you can just kind of. You can just do it like a regular note repeat. It also has a scale mode so that if you're in a certain scale, uh, it will stay in that scale. So let's pull up the piano roll real quick here so you guys can kind of see. All right. As you see, I'm hitting this key here, which is a sharp, but it's showing me that I'm hitting a regular note down here. I'm hitting a black key, but it's hitting a white key, right? 
I'm hitting a white key here and it's going to the black key, right? So you could change your scales by uh, holding down shift and scale. And then you can actually choose, when it, once this is flashing, you could choose what scale you wanted to be in, what chord you wanted to be in. So if I wanted to change this to uh, a C sharp minor and make this a major chord. So now it's set to that scale. And now, See, I'm hitting the B, but it's telling me that it's hitting the C, right? Because it can't, it's, it's locked to the scale, which is really cool. I really like that feature on uh, the keyboard. Um, it kind of reminds me of like the complete control, but you have to be inside of a complete control to kind of do this same thing. Um, but I really like that. So this also has chord modes that you can actually set up as well. So if you go to uh, shift and you go to scales and chords, now I'm in like scales and chords mode. So I can do different scales. And if I wanted to move like up the scale, I can use these arrows here for the pages. So I can go into, this is like sevenths and ninths. So ninth chords. So let me open up the piano roll fully so you guys can kind of see. So. It makes it just that simple to kind of set this up and get everything going inside of Reaper with this FL key Novation keyboard. I really like that feature um, pretty much the most <laughs> is that I could kind of set up some different scales. I can set my different, um, what I want it to actually be on scale wise, major, Dorian, Mixolydian. I don't even know what that is or how that's, if that's even pronounced correctly. <laughs> but yeah, so now. So now we have those chords inside of Reaper really easy with this keyboard. Um, would I suggest to get this for Reaper? I would say no. If you do have FL Studio, I would say yes. <laughs> This is a definite yes for FL Studio. I do have a video on my other channel showing you how I actually use this uh, inside of FL Studio. It works very, very nicely with FL Studio. You get to use a whole of the buttons. <laughs> but um, yeah, so um, there's also another button here where you can kind of uh, move things around. So if I hit on this button with the three little dots on it, so I can move the, the track note thing as you see here, I can move that. And if I go up or down, I'll zoom in or out, right? So in or out zoom is going up and down on this little button here. So I think that's pretty cool as well. And that's what the three buttons does on here. Um, it also, I did show you the note repeat and you have your option to fix chords. You can have your octaves here up and down. Um, I wasn't able to get any of these buttons to work here um, or like the solo button but you would have to actually program that inside of Reaper to actually say, hey, this is the solo button and whatever I hit will make this go solo. So um, with that being said, that's pretty much the end of this video. I just wanted to show you guys this keyboard, FL key 49 inside of Reaper and show you how it actually works and some of the things that you'll need to tweak in order for it to actually work inside of your DAW. But with that being said, that's the end of this video. I hope you guys uh, really enjoyed this one. Make sure you are liking and subscribing to the channel. And once again, thank you for watching Learning Reaper. Till next time. Peace. Hey you, yes you. YouTube wants you to watch this video next, man. Go ahead and click it. I'll wait. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. I'm not gonna keep waiting here. All right, I will see you in the next video though. Peace.